In this video, I'm going to show you the first three lures you should throw if you're trying to catch largemouth bass. In this video, we're going to talk about three very easy to use lures to help you try to catch your very first largemouth bass. Now, first off, if you're brand new to fishing, I highly recommend that you go back and watch this video where I cover the basics of fishing poles, rods, reels, line, and some of the terminal tackle. We also discuss some of the fishing knots that we use, and it will give you a good understanding of some of the things that we're going to talk about. Again, if you're brand new, watch this video about spinning rods so you get the basic understanding of how to set them up because we're going to start by moving up to the next bigger size of spinning rod to deal with the next bigger size fish. In my previous video, we were using a smaller spinning rod because we were going after smaller fish. You can find combos like these at your local retail stores, sporting goods stores, anywhere between $30 and $60. You don't need anything super fancy. You're just looking for a little bit bigger rod and a little bit bigger reel than the panfish. The baits that we're going to cover today are all cast and reel baits. What I mean by that is we're going to throw it out and reel it back in. Repeat over and over until we get a fish to bite. There are hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of lures people use to catch largemouth bass. A lot of those baits are meant to catch fishermen and not fish necessarily. Pretty much anything you throw given the right place the right time could catch a bass. But we're trying to keep it simple. We're not going to worry about brand names, who on YouTube throws this and that. These baits, for the most part, are all the same. So let's start with bait number one. You'll find these in any of your local retailers. This is just a swim bait. This one happens to be made by Storm. This is a little, probably, two-inch bait. They make them three, four, five inches. It's just a simple swim bait that's got a hook baked into it. You tie the fishing line on, you cast it out, and you reel it in. Again, this is one of those, you throw it out and you vary your speeds, try to find what the fish like. So let's see what it looks like under the water. See, nothing fancy, it just mimics a bait fish swimming by for a large mouth to look at in the tack. But that's the swim bait. The next bait is called a spinner bait. It's just a jig head with a hook, a rubber skirt, and some spinning blades attached to a wire. And this is meant to look like a bait fish swimming by with these blades spinning, throwing flash and giving off vibration that the largemouth will detect and come and hit it. All of these baits are meant to imitate something in the water that largemouth eat. You're either trying to catch them while they're feeding or get a reaction strike. The cool thing about this is is you can reel it in for a little bit and then stop and let it flutter down and then start reeling it again real fast. This makes it look like a bait fish that's dying and spiraling down might draw a reaction strike. If not, you speed it back up and the bass thinks it's a bait fish trying to get away and might hit it out of instinct. But in the water, this skirt puffs and looks like a swimming fish and these spinning blades look like other fish swimming with it. Gives it a nice big profile. Now we'll get into the science of bass later on down the road. This video, we're just trying to keep it simple. Three baits to catch your first bass. But this bait throws off a vibration and flash, and that vibration, oh, that's something that draws a largemouth bass. But this is a spinner bait. Let's see what this looks like in the water. Again, cast it out, reel it in. If you're fishing on a bank and you've got stumps or a weed line, try to cast parallel to the bank because bass like to sit in cover and like to ambush things as they swim by. All right, third bait. This is one that's taken the bass fishing world by storm the last several years, and it's called a chatter bait. It's a very simple bait. It's similar to the spinner bait, but the blade on it doesn't spin, it wobbles in the front. So again, you have another jig head with a big hook and a skirt to give off that action in the water. But the difference is this has a single blade up front and it throws off a vibration more like a brrrr as it's going through the water. Whereas the, the blades of a spinner bait make more turbulence, this one throws off a whole different thump. Now the great thing about this one is you can fish it fast, 
across the, the upper part of the water, or you can let it sink down to the bottom and let it hop off the bottom, kind of like a crawfish. As you saw from their earlier demonstrations, the lake that I'm at today is very, very clear. When the water's really clear like that, you want to have more natural colors like this green pumpkin chatterbait. It more mimics a bluegill that's in the water. And again, we're trying to match the hatch, so to speak. We want the bass to think whatever it's chasing is something that it normally eats. But in clear water, this more resembles a bluegill. Now let's say you've had a lot of rain and the water's really muddy and you can't see into it. Like from all the dirt running down the banks and into the water. Kind of looks like, you know, mom's Starbucks. Well, you want to change your colors up a little bit. When it's, when it's stained and not as clear, you want to go with a color like green and white. Because the way the bass see things, their color spectrums are a little different. Again, we'll get into the science of bass down the road. We're trying to keep it simple. But if you have stained water, you want something like this green and white or a white. And if it's really clear water, you want something really natural like this green pumpkin with some browns in it. So these are the chatterbaits. Let's see what they look like in the water. Now down the road, we'll talk about adding trailers to these things to give it a little bit different profile. A chatterbait like this, you might bounce it off the bottom. You can give it a crawfish trailer and bounce it down and make the bass think that they're going after crawfish if there's crawfish prevalent in your area. Or you can get swim baits that are similar to these but a lot bigger that don't have the hook built into them that you can put on the trailer of this and make it look like a fish again swimming through the water. Same thing can be said for a spinner bait. You can add a tail on the back and give it just that much more action. These chatter baits with that tail on it, man, they catch some fish. Well, here, let me show you. Chatterbait, baby! Let's go! This season, the chatterbait has definitely been my favorite. My biggest bass was just over five pounds. Caught on this chatterbait with the tail on the back. Oh my goodness, what a great fish. And since you stuck around this far in the video, I'm going to give you a bonus bait. This is called a buzz bait. And this operates on top of the water. The best time to throw this is right as or before the sun's coming up and just as and after the sun is going down. Those crack of dawns and that last little bit of light pulling it across the top of the water. So let's show you what this looks like in the water. Okay, so with the buzz bait, I'm just gonna hold the line with my finger, open the bell, give it a nice long cast. And I want to get that up on top of the water as fast as possible and reel just fast enough to keep it spinning on top of the water. If a bass hits this, you're going to have to wait until you feel the pull from the bass. A lot of the times they'll open their mouths and suck the bait in. And if you don't give them enough time to clamp down and get that bait in their mouth, you'll pull it away from them. So the key to catching these fish on a buzz bait is not to react on the strike, but wait until you feel the tug on the line. There we go, first top water of the year. 
make sure I got the hook in him good. That's a good fish to start the day with. Look at that. Looky there, looky there. First fish of the day. Look at you, big boy. Look at you, big boy. Oh, yeah, and I didn't bring my damn scale. It is in the truck. Looky there, looky there. And I will tell you what, if the first bass you ever catch is in a topwater bait like this, you are going to be hooked for life. There is nothing more exciting than catching a bass on a topwater bait. And like I said before, there are tons and tons of other baits that we'll get into down the road. But for your first attempt at catching a largemouth bass, buzz bait, chatter bait, the spinner bait, and these little swim baits. And you don't have to get all of them. If you just get one or two of each, that's fine. I literally used to throw nothing but spinner baits when I was a kid, and I caught hundreds of fish. I literally carried two colors, one white, one green and white. And I had nothing but a blast catching fish. It really wasn't until the chatter baits came along and I started catching a ton of fish on them that these really became my go-to baits. Now again, over time, we'll get into all kinds of different types and techniques of different baits. Again, we've got a lot of content coming down the road. But hey, our job here is to get you into some of this. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section. If any of these tips helped you catch your first bass, hey, tag me on Instagram. I want to see them. I'll drop a link down in the description below. Again, if you're brand new to fishing, start with this playlist. If you want to check out some of those fishing knots, look at those right here. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Now get out and go fishing.